from New York City to the world. It's Dominic Carter. And good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Dominic Carter here with you. A bumpy day at the White House defiant press briefing. The White House refusing to explain Parkinson's expert eight visits, a doctor eight visits to the White House, one per month for eight months. The press secretary accusing reporters of quote unquote personal attacks during a tense briefing. I always like for you folks to see how news is made and how this actually goes down. So in a few minutes, I'm going to let you hear the exchange, which runs a few minutes of how reporters at the White House press briefing went toe to toe with the administration. But first, former President Donald Trump speaking out on Hannity a short time ago. Uh, Mr. Trump declaring he doesn't expect Biden to drop out of the contest due to ego. And also, Mr. Trump says uh, because of the first lady having a good time and because he believes Hunter is calling the shots. Listen to this. This is uh, former President Trump a few hours ago on Hannity. It looks to me like he may very well stay in. He's got an ego and he doesn't want to quit. He doesn't want to do that. It just looks to me like that's what he wants. I think Jill would like to see him stay. She's having a good time. I notice she's really seems to be having a good time. And I I'm hearing that Hunter is calling the shots. So this isn't necessarily a very positive thing for our country. But uh, I think he, you know, might very well stay in. And if he does, uh, nobody wants to give that up that way. He's going to feel badly about himself for a long time. It's, It's hard to give give it up that way, the way uh, where they're trying to force him out. So, I mean, you really have to speak to his doctors, but obviously he's been uh, sheltered by the fake news media. And the media has been complicit with, uh, I'm not going to say a cover-up, but with the president's uh, apparent uh, cognitive issues. I still contend, not if, but when, President Biden has to leave this re-election race He is as defiant as ever. And some Democrats are pushing back. So what I want to do, let's go ahead and open up the phone lines. 800-848-9222 to reach the Dominic Carter Show right now. 800-848-9222. So on one side, you have the Democrats that are publicly stating Mr. Biden has to go because he's going to drag down the entire Democratic ticket. On the other, you have uh, people like Whoopi Goldberg on The View declaring no matter what, Biden should stay in the race. First, I want you to listen to Congressman Adam Smith on why, of Washington of why he's calling for Biden to drop out of the contest. A lot of Democrats are saying, well, let's move on. Let's stop talking about it. We're not the ones who are bringing it up. We're not the ones who said any time, any place. And only Joe Biden was on that stage with Donald Trump. Our constituents are bringing it up. The country is bringing it up. And the White House, sorry, campaign strategy of be quiet and fall in line and let's ignore it simply isn't working right now. And it's not. But then you have the diehards that say anybody but Trump, and they're wrong. Trump is the man to lead this country back to greatness. 800-848-9222. Listen to this nonsense from Whoopi Goldberg, one of the uh, ladies of The View, where she declares Biden essentially no matter what. I don't care if he's pooped his pants. I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. Show me he can't do the job. And then I'll say, okay, maybe it's time to go. Now, he had a bad night the first time 
that he went out and deba debated with um, Kamala Harris. And everybody wanted him to quit then, say, you can't talk to women like this, or you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. He came back, said, you know what, I got it, and gave four years. I, I almost said interesting, but it's not interesting. What do you expect from the ladies at The View? Uh, to say that their views are warped would be the understatement of the year. But back to the Parkinson's doctor uh, visiting the White House eight times in the last eight months. The White House is revealing very few information. Of course, you had the uh, the letter from Biden's uh, doctor tonight, but the White House is officially not revealing much information. So, for example, the press secretary would not even say the doctor's name at the briefing. I want you to listen to this, folks, and I want you to listen carefully. This is how news is made. It's back and forth between the press secretary and members of the fourth estate journalists from publications all over the country. Listen to the back and forth between the White House and reporters. Uh, I'm not going to share people's names from here, uh, but the president, I can tell you, has seen a neurologist three times as it's connected to the uh, to a physical that he gets every year that we provide to all of them. Well, that's a very basic, basic direct question. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait a second. Eight wait. times or at least once in regards to I the just, president wait. specifically. Hold on a second. Not what you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Come, Ed. Please, a little respect here, please. So every year around the, f the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. That's You're what I'm saying. I am telling you that he has seen them three times. That is what I'm sharing with you, right? So every time he has a physical, he has had to see a neurologist. So that is answering that question. No, it's not. No, it is. It yes, is. You're Dr. asking Kevin me. Kennard, come I to can, the White House. But I just, and I also said to you, condition. Ed, I also said to you, for security reasons, we cannot share names. We cannot share names. You cannot we share have names to. We have to. Others he would have met with. We but cannot can share names no, 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 in regards no, no, no. to if we, someone came here no, in regards we to cannot the share. We cannot share names of specialists broadly. It, from a dermatologist to a neurologist, we cannot share names. There are security reasons. We have to. We have to protect. I understand that. I hear you. I hear you. Ed, I hear you. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. I think they would appreciate that too. We have oh, to give them. Of the doctor. We have to keep their privacy. It's public. It is public. It's public I, I, I hear you. I have to allow guys, this to guys, career, guys, unless the White House guys, the hold question. on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth with well, me in this aggressive way. We missed around here about how information's been shared with the press corps around here. What do you miss about? Oh, what do you miss everything about? Everything he just asked about. And what do you? And then every time I come back and I answer the question and that you, you guys asked. Correctly, didn't have to come back and clean. I never answered the question in correctly that is not true i was asked about a medical exam i was asked about a physical that was in the line of question that i answered and i said no he did not have a medical exam and i still stand that by that matter of fact the president still stands by that he had a verbal check-in that is something that the president has a couple times a week a couple times a week now in regards to dr kevin Kennard. and i am telling you right now that i am not sharing confirming names from here it is a security reason. I am not going to do that, Ed. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me. I'm not going to confirm a name. It doesn't matter if it's even in the log. I am not going to do that from here. That is not something I am going to do. What I can share with you is that the president has seen a neurologist for his physical three times. Three times. And it is in the reporting that we share a comprehensive reporting. Matter of, matter of fact, it's more than what the last guy shared, and it is in line with what George, George W. Bush did. It's in line with what Obama did. And so it is comprehensive, it is out there. I just read a quote from it, but I am not, I am not 
going to devolve somebody's name and, or confirm someone. I'm not going to do that. That is as is privacy for that person. I'm not going to do that. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me from here. I'm just not going to do that. It is inappropriate and it's not acceptable. So I'm not going to do it. And folks, I wanted you to hear in a normal back and forth situation uh, amongst reporters and press secretaries, that's the way it's supposed to happen on a good day where journalists are holding the administration, the administrations around the country, state governments, local governments, in this case, the White House, holding them accountable uh, and that that's the way it should go down. Let's begin with your telephone calls on the Dominic Carter show his mo- this morning. Dimitri in Colorado. Good morning. What's on your mind, Dimitri? Good morning. Uh, first time caller. I love your show. Thank um, you for, re- for calling. The reason why they're so resistant to being transparent towards his health is because the gig is up. He's busted. Plus, I think he's so sick, he doesn't even realize the dire situation that he's in. The poor guy, is, he's a mess. And uh, the other thing is, earlier today, he was talking on a Morning Joe, he was saying that he's not going to allow the elites in the Democratic Party to intervene with his, with his nomination. He's been, in, he's been in, the, uh, in the Senate and Congress for 40 years. He is one of the elites. <laughs> what are we talking about here? He is Dimitri, one of the elites. You're correct. And he was you're, vice you're, president. You're correct. And, and, and yes. And um, uh, he was on Morning Joe. And that's even interesting because it, it's reached the point where the White House is copying Trump. That's Trump style to call morning shows and say, let's go. Mano a mano live. I have nothing to hide. Now Biden is trying to do the same thing. Will it work, Dimitri? And I have one more thing to say, please. One more thing. You know, they're, they're talking about, you know, uh, the, the, uh, 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 what's going to happen in the future. He's going to mess up again. And it's, 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 it's inevitable because the man is sick. It's inevitable. So they're going to try to uh, isolate him as much as they can. But you can't. You're the president. You're going to be exposed to everything for Indeed. the next five, six months. Indeed. Dimitri, you are a thousand percent correct. Uh, everything that the president does is magnified over and over. Thank you as a first time caller from Colorado this morning. We are going to take a break. Dimitri just referenced President Biden on Morning Joe. A bit later in the program, we'll let you hear what he actually had to say. We will be right back. This is Dominic Carter. This is Greg Kelly for Priority Gold. What does it mean to be America's precious metals dealer? It means that you're in touch with the hearts and minds of those who love this country, value our freedom, and want to protect the future. Priority Gold is that precious metals dealer. They've helped thousands of Americans back their retirement with solid gold and silver. Call Priority Gold at 888-506-6439. Receive free shipping, free storage, a free investment guide, and one of the best purchase experiences in the industry. Call now or go to PriorityGold.com Every day we rise, challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov slash careers. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And folks, You listen to this program either in the midnight hour or 3 to 4 p.m. live each weekday. You know that I also do a weekly segment with former Congressman Anthony Weiner. It's called The Left Versus the Right. And Mr. Weiner comes from the left. I come from the right. And uh, a few minutes ago, we played for you Whoopi Goldberg and Washington Congressman Adam Smith. 
Smith calling for Biden to go. Whoopi Goldberg defending Biden at all cost. Mr. Weiner is in that camp of defending Biden, it seems, at all cost. I want you to listen to a clip from uh, the, the show, and I do need to set this up. So whenever I call Mr. Weiner out on Biden, uh, normally he's good with it, but this past uh, week on Saturday, whenever I called him out on, on Biden, noting that Trump is headed back to the White House and Trump is what America needs, Mr. Weiner pushed away from the table and he would pout and just sit there and wouldn't say anything. And that's what happened during this episode. And here is what it sounded like. I need you to let me get a word in. You said you you, need me to let you get a word in. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. No, no, no. Every week. Keep going. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going, Dominic. Nonstop. Trump is the devil. Trump supporters are bubbas. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're telling me to let you get a word in. So go ahead. No, no, no. No, no. Okay. Okay. You want me to keep going? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Weiner. Week after week, you engage in these delusional ideas. I don't know if they're promising you an ambassadorship. I don't know what it is. But, Mr. Weiner, for this to work. Am I a friend? Uh, for this to work, Mr. Weiner, we both have to be honest. And all you do is sit up here and talk Democratic garbage week after week. Women that are raped and murdered by migrants, you make excuses for those migrants, and you say that that Americans commit more crime. I could go on for the rest of the show, but I'll give you your say. You want to talk now? Or you still pouting? No, I'm, I'm ready to go anytime you want to let me talk. Go ahead. Okay. And so normally what happens is Wiener does all the talking and I'm left in the corner. But anyway, that's just to give you an illustration of how delusional Democrats are. Some, not all, some, not all. When it comes to the Democratic Party, progressive politics, and we all know what it's done in terms of the condition the country is currently in. Steve, Newark, New Jersey, good morning. What's on your mind? And now that he has this country in chaos, that Biden, I, get, I continue to tell you that he, he's, he's, he's going to run. He's going to be in the game only because he has to protect that criminal enterprise, his entire family. They, they got enough on him. If, they, if, if it was a Republican Senate, he'd be in jail. Trust me, he'd be, he'd be on trial someplace. But it, he's going he's gonna to protect it to the end. Trust me when I tell you. And uh, Dominic, not to get off topic, just so... Uh, Chicago, 4th of July weekend, 100 people Horrible. shot, 17 dead, 8-year-old was one of them. 19 dead. 19, one 8-year-old kid. It's disgusting. Going up north, Amsterdam, New York, is it safe? Going up north, Amsterdam, New York. I, I, I don't know. You're saying upstate, Steve? Yeah, up, upstate. It's a, it, it's a is, stop I've never heard that. of Amsterdam. Say that again now, Steve. I've never heard of Amsterdam. It, oh, okay, I thought it was up in uh, up where you're at. It's in Amsterdam, New York. I don't know anything about it, but it's a stopover for two days. Okay. But anyway, well, well, be, I, I, like be I said, safe. he's protecting the enterprise. Well, I, I hear you. So you don't think he's going to get out at all? Not at all. Nope. He's going to protect that enterprise, that brother, the son, and I'm sure there's a few other... Sleazy Democrats involved in that, and it may be Schumer. Well, That's- it's it's going it's going to be uh, interesting because Democrats are turning up the heat on President Biden. We will see. And maybe Steve, maybe you're correct. Uh, uh, Mr. Trump on Hannity basically said the same thing. But Trump, it's in his interest for Biden to stay in because he's guaranteed to win. But guess what? Trump is guaranteed to win no matter what. Time for a break. I'll be right back. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out in the days ahead. Remember, folks, the RNC starts their convention in about a week. The Republicans are up first. Biden declares he's not going anywhere, and we are taking your calls, 
888-900-9222. Before we continue with your calls, first, Biden appeared on Morning Joe, on Morning Joe, borrowing a page from what Trump does, calling shows uh, and and just talking uh, live, uh, give and take. And Trump is the master of it. And now Biden is trying to do the same. But there's a big difference. Biden is no Donald Trump. And I mean that in the most positive way that you could think as it relates to the former president of the United States that is headed back to the White House, not for him, but for all of us to help rebuild this country. We cannot have another four years of progressive uh, politics and policies where migrants are, you know, that's just the beginning. Then there's crime. Then, 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 then there's uh, the supermarkets, the cost of food and gas. And I could go on and on and on. But I want you to listen. Uh, President Biden on Morning Joe declaring that he's in the race and that he's not going anywhere. And he says the reason why he's been doing a number of recent events publicly is to reaffirm his belief that he says the public wants him to stay in this race. I wanted to make sure I was right, that the average voter out there still wanted Joe Biden. And I'm confident they do. And I'm confident, and like I said, the press is with me. I, I think they've been fairly fair. I haven't read any reporting they did today. But the fact is that, you know, I think they have to acknowledge we had large crowds, enthusiastic crowds. And, you know, and now they're talking about whether I use a prompter. Well, I did it all extemporaneously. The fact of the matter is, <laughs> I was using prompters too. I don't get that. But at any rate, the bottom line here is that we're not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I wouldn't be running if I didn't absolutely believe that I am the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in 2024. We had a Democratic nominating process where the voters spoke clearly. I won 14 right. million of those votes, etc. So I, I, I just want, I'm, I not only believe that from the beginning, but I wanted to reassert and demonstrate that it's true. And I'm going to be doing that all through this week and from here on. Well, from here on, the president says we will see. We will see. Back to your telephone calls here on the Dominic Carter Show. Let's go to Roger, line two uh, in Fishkill, New York, upstate Fishkill. Uh, good morning. What's on your mind? Uh, good morning, uh, Carter. I always enjoy your show. You're a wonderful person and very honest with integrity. And what's on my mind is all this yik 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 yak 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 with Biden. Oh, uh, you know, I just had one bad night. Okay, put up your deuce and let's have another debate to put everything in rest. <laughs> You're so correct on that because you and I both know that's not going to happen. Yeah, it should happen, you know, instead of, and then he called, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, morning Joe show just to show the public, hey, I can do this. Hey, I can do that. Who knows that he's not reading off a card on the phone? Nobody sees that. You're, you're correct. And not only that, calling Morning Joe is that's not like friendly fire. That's not, you know, they're, they're in the Biden camp. So if you if you want to impress us, if you really want to impress us, call Fox News. That'll do it. Yep. Yep, I will keep calling and say that because Biden, they, they, they're trying to hide it, you know? You want to put everything to the rest, oh, with this content of the test and this and that. You know what? Hey, President Trump, I would want to debate you again on public TV just to put everything in, in, the, in the rest. So there's no issue. So let me debate you again and prove me. I'm going to prove it to you that I have one bad night but I will not have a second bad night. <laughs> right. Well, you raised some uh, some excellent points there, Roger. Uh, thank you for the call from Fishkill, New York. Let's go to Sandra in New Jersey. Good morning, Sandra. What's on your mind? Oh, good morning, Dominic. Um, you know, I learned earlier this evening two things that the uh, Biden administration uh, changed their uh, stand on. One 
all of a sudden they oppose. And, and I'm glad, of course, but I, I'm surprised why now not all four, they're, they're, they're opposing transgender surgeries on minors. I think this is just a strategy to get votes. I mean, because all along they they were all for it. And also suddenly they're saying they're going to deport more people than Trump would. So they're like pathetic. I mean, they're copying everything that Trump stands for. That's so blatantly obvious. And and what worries me is we all see it, you know, all the people that call you, we're all aware of this when we hear these changes. They're so obvious, but I'm concerned that others will be fooled and, and uh, by their lies all the time. So that's what I'm thinking. That is a real concern. People that are in the know, uh, people that listen to this program, the Dominic Carter Show, you folks can't be easily fooled. But you're correct, Sandra, the masses, all they see is the changes and and they generally uh, give the administration credit. Now, in fairness to President Biden, uh, Republican administrations do this as well uh, in an election year. Thank you for the uh, call, Sandra. Let's go. Let's see here. Let's go to Michael in New Jersey. Good morning, Michael. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, Dominic. I'm a first time caller. I just wanted to tell you, I heard the show that you did with Anthony Weiner on Saturday, and he was so horrible on the show. I, I, I had to shut it off after about 15 minutes. He was very obnoxious. He wouldn't let you speak. And uh, he was just, it was just horrible. He went on and on about January 6th. And um, he was just uh, just a mess. And you have tremendous patience to even tolerate him at all. Well, th- well, cu- a couple of things, Michael. One, thanks for being a first-time caller. Please make sure it's not the last time that you call because we really want to hear from you. Two, as it relates to uh, to Mr. Weiner, uh, and folks, please don't take this out of context. Don't take this out of context, please. I've known him for 30-plus years. Does he get under my skin every blue, 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 blue moon? Yes. But generally, I know that he's engaging in straight up, Michael, Democratic talking points. The thing that I believe would be more useful to the public is if he would stop with the talking points and truly assess uh, situations, which is what I do. If I think Trump is wrong on something, I'm going to say he's wrong. If I think the Democrats are wrong and they are wrong a lot these days, then I'm going to say it. But he won't say. So, like, here's an example. He kept trying to hammer me on uh, on uh, Saturday about Trump not being over 50 percent. Now, 50 percent for an incumbent is considered safe running for reelection. Trump is not an incumbent. One, two. How dare you talk to me about Trump's uh, approval rating when Biden's is at an all time low at 37 percent? And Mr. Weiner said, no, 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 it wasn't. I went back and checked. Mr. Biden's approval rating is hoovering around 37 percent. So that's what I mean about being more honest. But let me be clear. Uh, I, I've always liked him and we can sit down, meaning Mr. Weiner, we can sit down and agree to disagree. But and th- hey, Michael, but the bottom line here is please uh, don't don't make this the last time that we hear from you. You still with me, Michael? But, you know, you have uh, tremendous, tremendous patience because I couldn't stand him screaming and he wouldn't let you speak. He kept talking and, and you asked him, let, let, you know, let him hear you. But he wouldn't let you speak. And he was a monster. And I had to shut it off after about 15 minutes. He was screaming. Well, Michael, that's what happens when the merits are not on your side. When 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 you've spent 10 weeks defending Biden adamantly and his entire campaign is crumbling right in front of our eyes, there's not you don't have any substance to back up your (laughs) argument. That's true. That's true. So at the end of the day, that's it. And sometimes 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 uh, you can make your point by being quiet and just letting a person talk. 
And that's what I do sometimes with Mr. Wiener. Thank you for the call, Michael, in New Jersey. Mario, Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, Mario. Welcome to the Dominic Carter Show. Good good morning, Dominic. My question to you and your expertise in politics, the third party uh, candidates, you know, they're unseen and unheard from. Do you think they deserve a forum not much of a debate, but a discussion among themselves uh, to express their point of views and their political positions. And how would that affect um, the Biden campaign? Would it be an anti-Trump vote? Would it be an anti-Biden vote? Uh, How do you see that? Well, one, 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 they do deserve a forum amongst themselves. But I'm going to be brutally honest with you, not on the main stage. Uh, the, 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 the stakes are too high. It's either going to be a Democrat in the White House or it's going to be a Republican. And we don't need any situation. I guess RFK uh, Jr. is a special situation, but we don't need, other than him. We don't need anything that may end up being a spoiler one way or the other. And so you ask, who would it hurt or help more? It depends on which third party candidate we're talking about. Uh, but I, I, I firmly believe, Mario, that and thank you for the call, that nothing is going to hurt Trump. They have tried to throw everything at him. They have nothing has worked. Norman, also in Brooklyn. Good morning, Norman. What's on your mind? Good morning, Dominic. Yeah. Every time you play, you know, I, I've heard. Every time I hear uh, Whoopi Goldberg, I just, I, it just makes me nauseous. I mean, everything is Trump derangement. Um, and I understand Joy Behar. Uh, she's just evil. And I, you know, I mean, she wrote a book anti-Trump and I, and she's, and that's it. And she's sticking with it. But Whoopi Goldberg, didn't she party with Donald Trump back in the eighties? Didn't of course Whoopi she did. Of course she did. So so what? what so what the hell? Why why is why is she going along? Listen, I know she likes her marijuana, so that may have eaten a, like a little hole in her head. But you know, the bottom line is why is why is she going along with this with this just this derangement? I mean, I want to I want to ask that? you a straight question, Norman, and I want sure. an honest answer from you. Sure. So, I I sit you down and I say Norman I'm going to put you on TV. Here's your salary starting at $2 million a year. But I need you to be anti-Trump all the time. What would you do? Honestly. Honestly, Norman will never betray somebody who's been nice to me. My answer would be no. So you would turn down the $2 million? I would. I can make money. Let me tell you. Um, if I, if I, if somebody's willing to pay me two million to stab somebody somebody who's been nice to me in the back, I can make money. I can make a lot of money, and I don't need to take money to stab people in the back. I feel that way about Elton John. Uh, Donald Trump threw threw a birthday party for Donald for Elton John back in the back in the also back in the eighties. Spent probably millions of dollars on the man. Okay. And it was like, you know, it was like the the party of the year. Now he hates Donald Trump. OK, he 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 appears for for for, you know, Biden on, you know, on on Pride Day and all this stuff. I, I just I, I, to me, you, you can't you can you can make money, always make money. This, this is not a problem. You'll you can figure out a way to make money and maintain your honor. Also, that's my that's my position. Well, I, I, I hear you, Norman, uh, and thank you for the call. But most people, most people would not turn down two million dollars a year to take a position that they may not even agree with because they're seeing the dollar signs. And by the way, Whoopi Goldberg makes a lot more than just two million dollars a year. So that's why she is so anti Trump, because that is the theme of the show. She's the leader of the show. And as the kids say, Whoopi Goldberg is getting paid. We are taking your telephone calls, 800-848-9222. We will be right back. This is Dominic Carter. Now, now, 
From New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And President Biden, as defiant as ever, declaring he's not going anywhere. And former President Trump speaking out on Hannity a short time ago. He doesn't expect Biden to drop out of the 2024 contest due to Biden's ego, stating the first lady seems to be having a great time and Hunter Biden is calling the shots. We are taking your telephone calls. Eddie, Babylon, Long Island. Good morning, Eddie. What's on your mind? Hello, Seth Dominic. Thank you. As uh, you're talking about Whoopi getting paid and really, you know, maybe not, this isn't, this isn't, she's been told what to say. Um, I, I took and taught Dale Carnegie human relations and public speaking, so I know how to speak and get along with people. I'm also a nuclear medicine technologist. And okay, I had Eddie, a I need you to get to the point. Eddie, I need you to get to the point. Please, go it's, ahead. It's coming right now. I had a patient that offered me a lobbyist position in Washington because he saw my talents in talking to people, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to pick the topic I was lobbying for, and I could not sell my soul for any amount of money, Dominic. Okay. And I have to ask you a question. Do you carry around Pepto-Bismol for what you go through? You have some guts and street smarts, and I think John Katz put you in there with Anthony on Sunday because he knows you can handle your stuff. You really Well, can. on Saturdays, on Saturdays, and, and management made the uh, decision. And, Eddie, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful call. And I, I hope that, uh, that, that, that you're not a stranger in terms of uh, calls. But management made the decision, and I and I say this all the time because I really am so thankful. It is the Katsimatidis family that took a, a shot on me, and they they uh, sort of like the farm system. They built me up through the farm system, uh, especially Margot Katsimatidis. She told me everything that's happening now, Eddie, for my career. She told me this about two years ago that it was going to happen. She said, give us some time. We're going to figure this all out. Hang in there with us. And so uh, I enjoy sitting there with Mr. Weiner. I just wish that he would give up the Democratic talking points. I think it would be a much better show if he was honest in his assessment rather than these knee jerk defenses of Biden and of the Democratic Party. Eddie, thank you for the call. A uh, a lovely call here. Let's go to Linda on Long Island. Good morning, Linda. What's on your mind? Hi, Dom. Uh, I, I know he's a friend of yours, uh, Anthony Weiner, um, but I'm not criticizing what he, what he says, but it's how he does it. He sounds, you sound like a man, and he sounds like a little boy who keeps not besides you know interrupting you, but he keeps like like that's how it's coming across to people, like a little boy who keeps like ah, and then he says things that I don't. A couple of things were not true. I heard that were not true. He does say things that uh, I don't know. I don't know why it's necessary. Otherwise, you you know, it would be okay if you just taught, didn't, you know, come off like that. And my other thing I wanted to say, if you don't mind, um, I don't know what your problem is with um, Joe Biden. And I heard somebody say, I guess I can say it. I heard somebody say it on the radio. They called her a whore. The, re- the reason that she's the vice president, it says it's all... A pu- now it's all published. It's coming coming out now because she wants to be president, and and she has no skills to be president. But she has her whole past. They can read about it, as you know about Willie Brown. Of course, I know about the Willie Brown right? situation. Of course. Yeah, um, that's how I found. I've known out about. You. I've known about it. I've known about it for 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 years. You know, I, I'm I'm trying to process this, Linda, to be honest with you. I feel that the public, and thank you for the call, the public has a right to know her background and how she moved up. But I'm also questioning men have done this for years in terms of sexual activity, and it's not news. So I'm questioning myself about, is this a double standard? But at the same time, the public's right to know 
about Kamala Harris and her uh, appetite, we'll just call it that, supersedes everything else. See you again tomorrow, folks. Hi, it's Lou Dobbs for Priority Gold, America's precious metals dealer. These are volatile times with high inflation, soaring debt, wars on multiple continents, and rising financial stress. Central banks are buying gold to diversify their reserves, so are many Americans. Call Priority Gold and find out how precious metals can help you diversify your portfolio. They're highly rated and happy to help. Call 1-866-303-6357 or get a free gold guide at PriorityGoldGuide.com. That's Priority. PriorityGoldGuide.com